Hello, Telvani here, and today I wanted to share with you an idea for League Starting Lightning Conduit Elementalist in 3.19 Lake of Calandra. Unlike my regular build guides, this has not been tried and tested in-game, as Lightning Conduit is a new skill being introduced this League. As such, attempting to League Start with a new skill, like Lightning Conduit, is very risky. Oftentimes a skill will sound good on paper, everything looks great in the path of building, but you get in game and you realize that it just doesn't scale as well as you thought it would. Or perhaps the actual skill mechanic itself is incredibly clunky or buggy to play. These are all things to keep in mind before attempting to league start with a new skill. And I definitely would not recommend league starting Lightning Conduit as a newer or inexperienced player. And you are bound to run into issues with a build based around new skills, and you'll need to be resourceful enough and knowledgeable enough to fix things on the fly as they arise. Another thing to keep in mind is that Lightning Conduit is going to be a two-button build. You'll need to keep applying shock on a monster with a secondary skill before you are able to blow them up with Lightning Conduit. So if you're not a big fan of skill pairings like Bladefall Blade Blast or self-cast Frostbolt Ice Nova, Lightning Conduit probably won't be for you. Overall, if you're planning on trying out Lightning Conduit, I'd be sure to have a backup build idea ready, something that's got a similar tree, so you can easily switch over to that skill instead. Maybe something like Spark or Arc. Alright, so with that little bit of a disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and start breaking down this theoretical build. First off, why Elementalist? Well, as we've said, Lightning Conduit is a skill that deals more damage with hits based on the effect of a shock present on an enemy. You'll also note that Lightning Conduit itself cannot shock. This means two things. First, we'll need to run a secondary skill to apply shocks to our enemies. Secondly, we'll want that skill applying as high a shock effect as possible. Right now, there are a lot of ideas flying around for how to build Lightning Conduit. But for the most part, there is one constant. You'll need to be an Elementalist. Elementalist gains access to the Shaper of Storms Ascendancy node. This is incredibly crucial for most Lightning Conduit builds, as it will guarantee that all of our skills, apart from Lightning Conduit, will shock. This guaranteed shock from the Ascendancy means that we don't need to worry about stacking shock chance or critical strike chance to shock with our delivery skill. More importantly, however, Shaper of Storms will give us a base shock effect of 15%. Normally, in order for a skill to deal a shock with an effect of 15%, you would need to deal around 5% of the monster's HP with a single hit. This is fine for weaker monsters and maps, However, things for like Uber Cyrus, for example, you'd need to be dealing millions of damage in a single hit to apply a shock that large. Shaper of Storms will allow us to bypass all of the hassles of scaling hit damage and allow us to focus on just scaling shock effect instead. Now, in my research, there has been some debate as to whether this 15% base shock effect is applied before or after increases and reductions to shock. The community wiki says that modifiers to shock effect such as percent increased effect of shock, apply to the effect of shock before the minimum or maximum effect is enforced. Try saying that five times fast. Anyway, you'll note that the Shaper of Storms Ascendancy node doesn't mention anything about minimum shock effect. It just says, shocks from your hits always increase damage taken by at least 15%. On the other hand, things like the Lightning Mastery, for example, explicitly use the wording plus 15% to maximum effect of shock. This would seem to imply that the shock effect from Shapers of Storms is used as a base and then multiplied by increases and reduction to shock. This is also how Path of Building is calculating shock effect from Shaper of Storms, and I am inclined to believe them. So what does this mean? Well, in order to achieve the maximum shock effect possible, which is 50% naturally and 65% with a Lightning Mastery, all we will need to do is stack things such as increased effect of lightning ailments, increased effect of non-damaging ailments, and increased effect of shock. For our purposes, these will all function exactly the same. Now normally, with a base shock effect of 15%, we'd need to get 500% increased effect from the above sources. However, this is again where the Shaper of Storms comes in, as it has this last line. 25% more effective lightning ailments you inflict with hits. 
if the highest damage type is lightning. This is incredibly powerful, as it means we will only need to stack around 300 to 350% increased effective shock. So now that we know why Elementalist is basically mandatory to play this build, let's take a look at the POB. There have been a lot of hypothetical builds and theoretical POBs running around for Lightning Conduit recently. Most of them have a pretty similar foundation. Since Elementalist is the mandatory class to League start with, we'll be rolling a Witch, and this means we'll be in this area to start. Pretty much everyone is going to recommend picking up Lightning Masteries and Elemental Overload. However, where my take on Lightning Conduit differs is that most trees I've seen have recommended going to the left, coming over here to pick up life, mana reservation efficiency, elemental damage, and more life. Most other builds will also recommend using Eldritch Battery with a high energy shield chest to solve for mana costs, as we are casting this skill 4 or 5 times per second. Other builds I've seen also recommend getting high rolls of spell suppression on all of your gear to solve for defenses. And all of this combined just doesn't sound like a League Start build to me. Like, oh, just get a 6-linked Val Regalia, and tier 2 spell suppression rolls on everything, or maybe just pick up a Natsiri Step, all on the very first day of the League. This is why I've chosen to forego Eldritch Battery, at least for this League Start version. Don't get me wrong, Eldritch Battery is a great ability, and you'll probably want to use it in the endgame, as you'll gain access to an extra aura with Divine Blessing support, and you can forget about mana costs. However, early on, I'm not convinced you'll be able to get high enough energy shield to sustain your mana costs. And by going Eldritch Battery, you miss out on the ability to run things like Inspiration Support and Arcane Surge. So in addition to dropping that, I've gone ahead and dropped this entire side of the tree, picking up these often overlooked life nodes, which grant increased mana recovery, which we'll need since we're not running Eldritch Battery. Also, with the points we've saved from avoiding the left side of the tree, we are able to come down here to pick up 51% spell suppression chance. This is equivalent to like 4 pieces of gear with tier 1 spell suppression. And while you'll want to get that eventually, early on it's probably not very realistic. We'll also be able to grab some more life, as well as grace mana reservation efficiency by coming down here. And on top of that, we are taking the Charisma Wheel to make up for the loss of Sovereignty. Another thing to mention is that we are taking a Mana Mastery up here. The Notable is giving us a lot of mana regeneration, and the Mastery helps keep our Lightning Conduit affordable. Speaking of which, let's take a look at our skills right now. We are using Shock Nova to simulate Lightning Conduit, since the skill isn't available in POB at the time of this recording. And I've gone ahead and entered some custom modifiers into the Path of Building Configuration tab. So this should be pretty close to what Lightning Conduit will be doing damage-wise. Because we aren't running Eldritch Battery, we are able to pick up Inspiration as a link. This will help us crit more often, making sure Elemental Overload is proccing. But more importantly, it is giving us extra damage and cost reduction. You'll see that if we swap out Inspiration for Cruelty, our mana costs go from 28 all the way to 66. Moving on, we've got our Wave of Conviction and Conductivity socketed into a Trigger Wand. If you don't have a Trigger Craft, you can always just tie your Curse to Wave of Conviction with Hex Touch. Next, we've got Enduring Cry. This is just a nice thing to have if you've got free skill slots on a build, as it can give you Endurance Charges on bosses, and it acts as a second life flask. Because we're not running Eldritch Battery, We've got three extra skill slots compared to most other Lightning Conduit builds, as we won't be using a Divine Blessing. This means we can pick up some quality of life by running both a single target and AoE skill to shock enemies with. I'd recommend Stormbrand for bosses, as it will cling to the enemy no matter where it moves in the room, and you can run something like Orb of Storms or maybe actual Shock Nova for clearing. Regardless of the skill you choose, you'll need to make sure you've got it tied to Unbound Ailments to help achieve the maximum shock effect. For our auras, we're running Determination, Grace, Defiance Banner, and Clarity. Clarity is very important since we are not an Eldritch Battery build, 
and will want to be regenerating close to 150 mana per second with this build. Finally, we'll be running Flame Dash and Molten Shell, tied to both Increased Duration and Arcane Surge. This will give us an extra defensive layer half of the time, as we will be running Molten Shell on left click. If you prefer cast when damage taken, you could maybe forego having two different shock delivery skills and socket Molten Shell elsewhere. However, the Flame Dash, Arcane Surge, Increased Duration is fairly important, as it will make the Arcane Surge buff last 7 seconds rather than 4. And I don't know about you, but I generally Flame Dash more often than once every 7 seconds. Later, you could probably drop the Increased Duration link and just run the Divergent version of Arcane Surge, which will add several seconds to its duration. Next, let's take a look at the gear for this. You'll want to get a couple of wands with spell damage and cast speed. Profane wands will be very nice, but they also increase your cast rate and thus the mana drain. Plus one to lightning or spell gems is very good for damage, but you can always just grab flat added lightning to spells instead. Again, you'll want one of these wands to have a trigger craft on it, but it's not mandatory initially. Moving on, our gear is pretty basic, so I won't go over all of it, but I will mention a few things. We need to pick up 9% spell suppression somewhere on our gear, and this can be achieved through two crafts or a single mid-roll on your head, boots, or gloves. You'll want to pick up increased effect of non-damaging ailments. And finally, the build is pretty reliant on the barracks grip to solve for life leech. This ring could be initially expensive, as a lot of content creators are recommending it. However, Doriani's Invitation Belt, or Cluster Jewel, could solve life leech as well. There's also a temple mod that gives lightning resistances and lightning leech. And later, you could theoretically get leech on your gloves in the form of an Eldritch Implicit. And there you have it. My initial take on a Lightning Conduit League Starter. I'll probably keep playing around with a POB for a few days and see if I can min-max the League Star capabilities a little bit more before launch. If I come up with anything further, I'll be sure to update the description below. Anyway, thank you for watching, good luck with your League, and I'll see you in the next one.